Hey everybody, let's talk about WinForms WPF and how to move them forward with .NET Standard. Hey Chris, how you doing? I'm doing good, Nicola. Awesome, dude. So you work on the Partner App Experiences team. You work with what? What do you do? Uh, so I'm working with partners at the moment who are coming from a WinForms and WPF background, okay. maybe working largely with line of business or enterprise apps and, and figuring out how they can take their apps forwards using the investments and uh, leveraging the investments that they have today. So the biggest question there that I probably have for you is why? Why do people need to do that? So there's a number of reasons. I mean, it can be down to you want to service your app more easily using mm -hmm. background uh, upgrades. It may be that you want to start to uh, extend the reach of your app to new audiences. Sure. Or it may be that you just want a fresher, more modern user experience reaching new user inputs. So take advantage of the UWP platform. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So how do we do that? Like, What do we need to do to do this? So recently, we've brought a number of new investments in the tooling in Visual Studio mm -hmm. in Windows 10 Full Creators Update. But really, there's one technology that's kind of uh, anchoring this all together, and that's .NET Standard. So what is .NET Standard? I guess the simple way to explain it is that it's a common set of APIs supported by all mm -hmm. .NET implementations. So that way I can have one implementation that can be used by different types of uh, frameworks or platforms, right? So I can have Windows, Xamarin, iOS, Android, everything. Well, yeah, so imagine Xamarin Forms using the Mono .NET implementation. Yep. Imagine uh, WinForms WPF using the .NET Framework implementation. Or imagine UWP or ASP.NET Core uh, apps using the .NET Core implementation. That's great, but how does that help with existing WPF and WinForms applications? So what it means is that you can take uh, class libraries today, the code that you've invested in there, yeah. and you can discover which of those, uh, the APIs that you're consuming are .NET Standard compliant, or mm -hmm. namely .NET Standard 2 compliant, yeah. and you can move those to a .NET Standard library, and that will then be portable across all of these new audiences and surface areas. And you have a demo that you can show us this, right? I do. I'd love Man, to show you. Man, you're like, awesome, right? Let's do this. Just happen to have one right here. So Magically. <laughs> what I have here is a, a WinForms app. This yep. could easily be a WPF app as well. And it shows a very typical scenario where you've got a, a set of data grids on here with yep. a bunch of data. Kind of uh, looks like any WPF or WinForms app that I've ever seen. Yeah, so it's just a massive details view in here. I've got some controls at the top here for my menu bar. Uh, and what I'm doing here is calling through to an underlying SQL Server database. You've obviously spent a lot of time on this app. It's beautiful. I tried. So um, let's look in Visual Studio here just okay. for a, to get a bit of a feel of the actual uh, structure of the app. I've got my UI sitting inside of a WinForms project. It's calling through to a business logic layer here. Uh, that calls through to a data access layer. and then Great acronyms right there. Yeah. BLL, DAL, you know. <laughs> uh, and then in, in my data access layer, I've got a strongly typed data set, which is the connection into okay. my underlying SQL Server database. So how do I know which ones I can use in my .NET standard library? So the, the long way to do it would be to go on GitHub and look at the uh, .NET standard uh, documentation and look at all the 20,000 plus new APIs that we brought to .NET standard That's 2. Nothing. If I have like 100,000 developers, we can all split it up and we can do it. You can divide and conquer. We can. <laughs> we, we, we've made it easier, though. OK, good. So uh, if you go to the extension gallery in Visual Studio, you'll see we've got a tool in there called the .NET Portability Analyzer. So it'll okay. take two minutes to install. I've gone and done it ahead of time here. And when I install that, if I right click on my libraries in here, you can see I get these options in here, which is analyze project portability with project references. Okay. So if I click that, it's going to go off and look at the uh, business logic layer here, figure out that I have a dependency on the data access layer. Mm -hmm. It's going to take those, and it's going to do a comparison of the APIs I'm using for .NET Framework against what is supported by .NET Standard 2.0. Cool. Can you take a look at that? Let's open up the report I've created here. And it's going to take me into Edge here. I've asked it to output a HTML document. Okay. And, and you have 100% and 99.75% for, so that's a pretty high number. Yeah, so I've got a line item for each of the assemblies. One is the business logic layer, 100% compatibility yeah. with .NET Standard 2.0. Uh, and for the data access layer, 99.75. So 0 0.25 is not in .NET Standard 2.0, right? So at the bottom here, you can see that it's calling out what that 0.25% is that isn't supported okay. by the .NET Standard 2.0 mm -hmm. uh, spec. Uh, and that's this class called the typed table base. That's a pretty type. common class. It is, and, and what it relates to is the strong typed yeah. uh, uh, base class of, of the data set. Uh, and so we 
there's that, it may imply that there's some work for us to do here, but it's actually really simple because we bring out a number of supporting NuGet packages that build on top of .NET standard. Mm -hmm. So we just simply need to pull those assemblies or NuGet packages into our solution, and we get those implemented as well. Oh, great! So we've we've actually all done all the work for everybody. So yeah, just let me relax. Let me show you what it gives us. So if I go back over to my solution here, I've gone and done a bit of this work ahead of time. So we saw that the business logic layer was 100% compatible. Yep. So all I had to do there was go uh, right click new project and go to .NET Standard on the left-hand side mm -hmm. here, create a new class library, and by default, that's going to give me a .NET Standard 2. So you said .NET Standard 2.0. What about older versions of .NET Standard? How does that work? So the lower the version, the more reach you're going to get across different versions of uh, .NET framework and the different mm -hmm. implementations. But of course, you're going to get a smaller surface of APIs that you can tap into. So it is a bit of a trade-off, but the, the general best practice is to go as low a version as possible and then kind of work up from so that. So the lower the version, the more reach you have with your library. The mm -hmm. higher the version, the more APIs you can actually use. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Pretty clear. Yeah, so I, I just basically dragged across the classes from my business logic layer into my new .NET standard project. And then I'm going to do exactly the same here for my data access layer. So for my data access layer, I just need to drag across the data set. That strong so this is the set. one that had 99.75% yes, coverage, right? Yeah, exactly. And so I'm just going to drag that across. But yes, what about that type table base yeah. class? Well, in here, I've got a reference to the system.data.dataset extension as DLL. Oh, the and one you mentioned. The one I mentioned. Yeah. And this is where that implementation sits. Now, we're going to make this even easier going forward. So for anything that's Windows specific like that, we're going to bring this uh, NuGet package called Microsoft.Windows.Compatibility around so that any uh, implementations like that will just sit inside of that single NuGet so package. So you only have to reference one. Man, you've thought ahead of everything. I would love to claim responsibility for this, but there are some great minds at work here. Dude, just take the compliment. <laughs> Uh, so there's one final piece of work I need to do here. So if you maybe remember back in the .NET Framework days, you would have, have this concept of a configuration file, app.config yeah. or web.config. Uh, you don't have that concept with .NET mm -hmm. Standard. And so we've just got a polyfill class in here, which contains our connection string in this case. Uh, so you can see the connection string here through to my underlying SQL Server database. I've kept the namespace as the same as what I had in my .NET Framework classes. So we can reuse it across. To maximize yeah. that portability. And um, with that, I can just b um, build those classes now, and they will be .NET standard so classes. So now if you run it. So now what we can do is we can go to our WinForms project. We can delete the .NET Framework references just to okay. make sure there's no smoke and mirrors involved here. I can update, update the references here now to my .NET standard libraries. and That's the code you moved over to. Just yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's the new .NET standard classes. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I run my project this time, all it, being well, this should just work, but now we're much more uh, future-proofed. Uh, so now that standard. you've done this work, you can take the same standard libraries and create a new UWP application or a new Xamarin application and still access the same data business layer and the business logic layer. Exactly. So now, all being well, we should just be able to run our WinForms app up using those new .NET standard references, and it should just work as before. There you go. And Magically, it just works. It just works. Uh, so the next step, now we've done a, a, you know, some very light groundwork. Yeah, how do I use these inside of other types of applications now that you've done this? So all you need to simply do is just add a new UI head, whether it be a Xamarin mm -hmm. Forms app, whether it be an ASP.NET app, or whether it be a UWP app in this case. Okay. So I've gone and done some of the upfront work here for my UWP app. Uh, and I've also pulled in some third-party libraries like the Telerik controls that give us controls Obviously. like the data grid, for example. So now if I set my uh, start project up in here to be my new UWP app, I've already gone and had added the references in here to the same, so the same ones same, you just created. Yeah. Exactly the same libraries. Uh, and if I run the app up again now, you'll see that we're feeding through that exact same uh, So it's a UWP layer. app. But it still uses the same business logic layer and the same data layer. Yeah, and we're not talking about throwing away any code here. We understand yeah. that people still need to target those older pre-Windows 10 yeah. platforms. But you get to, to run both in parallel here using largely the same yeah. code base. And still use the new stuff and the new stuff, and then use the old stuff and the old stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got the same master detail view in here. Uh, I've also then started to tap into some of the Windows 10 uh, functionality oh, like Windows, Windows Hello. Hello. Uh, Hello, Chris. Hello. Uh, and then uh, if I go to create a new order in here, we can then start to bring in some of the newer UI concepts like the ink canvas control. Yep. Uh, and that's really handy if I've got my pen here, because I can start to support these. So new, handy. So handy, just on, you know, stuck on the side there. Uh, so I can start to introduce that and add a signature to my Look form. at you, the coolest kid in town. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, great. So how do people get started? 
So to get started, we're making this code all available on, on GitHub, so people can mm -hmm. go download that and play around with that. Uh, if you're a library developer today, we would recommend uh, making your library support .NET standard, so you reach as many people as possible, and just start to experiment in uh, taking the code over from WinForms to WPF in the same lightweight way here, and experiment with UWP and modernizing your app in that way. Hey everybody, thank you for watching the video. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, make sure to reach out on our Twitter handles. And make sure to visit the description page for the video, which will have all the links, including the GitHub repo. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Sorry, I just got distracted. By the rain. <laughs>